soul to free Beatrice. Not you. Did you really think this was all about the girl? She was the bait! Her soul is free now. Only you and I remain. Come for me, holy warrior. Come! Fulfill your destiny! All praise to the Most High Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Enough respect to all the brothers teaching the truth all over the earth. <clears throat> Tonight's lesson is going to be entitled, Analyzing Satan. And yep, you guessed it, Analyzing Satan. So as we go through the scriptures and we read and we do lessons, you know, I guess it was at some point we'll do a lesson on the spiritual demon Satan okay and we basically just going you know read some scriptures go into it a bit and just really what prompted it is I just have been thinking thinking about it you know and I see <clears throat> you so-called Christians you wacky tacky Christians you got these myths and these stories that you came up with that you've been passing on for generations and you know I guess we should just you know go into the scriptures and um bring out the truth about the matter now, curiously enough, this evening, I was just, you know, I have been meditating on it since I think about it yesterday. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Since about yesterday. So I said, well, you know what? Let's see if the if the spirit allows, I'll put together a lesson on it. And just now I looked up Satan on Wikipedia, so I couldn't help resist. I was trying to put scriptures together to see which direction I would go in. So once I read, you know, this <clears throat> and I'll share it with you. Then I couldn't resist, but, you know, go into a quick lesson about it. So from Wikipedia here, first off, let's just say this. You people in the churches and all of us, you know, at one point we believed in this this being that's supposed to be in hell torturing souls. And his um, his common name is the devil is what you know, I'm, I'm saying it according to how the world teaches it. But his um, his proper name would be Satan. Right. And then I went on Google Images and looked it up. <clears throat> and here's some of the images that, you know, they came up with. And this is always how, you know, you would describe the Satan down in hell torturing souls, according to Christianity. But according to the scriptures, you never see at any time the one known as Satan down under the earth torturing people. You never, you never see it. You never hear it in the scriptures. It's never said that he's in hell torturing people. It never even said that he's in hell. You know? So I did I actually did a um a search on it as soon as I can find it on the word Satan or I did a search on the word Satan you never see Satan mentioned with hell throughout the scriptures. And you should go and you know do that search your own self, but going back <clears throat> on Google Images, I just have different Images for what they would say Satan would look like, and it's always your standard red guy with a pitchfork and a tail and horns, right? <clears throat> but the scriptures don't describe anything like this. And you can go on Beelzebub because that's also another name for Satan. And here you see Beelzebub, and it's more of the same type of images, you know. And I'm not gonna bore you with this, I mean, I'm excited to bring it out. But a lot of this stuff is stupid, you know. You can click on devil. And you see more of the same. You see something like a, a guy here. <laughs> just like a normal white man. Which really in the scriptures, a lot of the time, the scriptures are speaking of the spiritual demon Satan. And, then, and to show you how perverted these Edomites is. You see this? I just came across this shit. You see? This is how perverted the mind of you Edomites is. You see? <laughs> And I remember back in a game I was playing. What's that game called? Dante's Inferno. We actually at the end you have to fight against Satan in hell. You know. And it's the same something like that. You got his rod all swinging while you're fighting against him. You know. But as you see here it's just more images of you know. Just the same stuff. Just that folklore you know. Now let's go back. <clears throat> Not to that. Matter of fact, uh, <laughs> you know, you people are, are, are wicked, man. Simple as hell. So let's go back. It's lucky. It keeps taking me back to that. 
That's not where I'm trying to go. Okay, here. Let's look up Lord of the Flies. You know, it's just more more of the same stuff. It's, it's, there's, there's nothing really. Like I said, it's not in the scriptures anywhere. Baphomet. Look up Baphomet. See what it says. See here. Just more of the same stuff, you know. Just more of the same. See here. Always was the damn rod out, man. You perverted Edomites. You're a bunch of wicked ass people, man. This comes from Edomite, from the minds of Edomites, you know. But we're going to get into the lesson, you know. Just bear with me here. I'm just kind of checking it out. So, like I said, the scriptures don't describe anything like what you people believe in. <laughs> you Edomites are funny, man. You are funny people. Okay, so here, let's go to the article from Wikipedia entitled Satan. We just get right into the lesson. So here, let's read it and see what it says, and then we'll read the scriptures, and we'll bring out some points. Now here it says, Satan is an entity in the Abrahamic religions that seduces humans into sin. Right? In Christianity and Islam, he is usually seen as a fallen angel or a jenny who used to possess great piety and beauty, but rebelled against God who nevertheless allows him temporary power over the fallen world and a host of demons. Now, that's the first lie. But this is what you people believe. Satan never rebelled against the Heavenly Father. You know, and he never got angels to go against the Most High. That never happened. Matter of fact, we just should just go and read a scripture here. This is Ecclesiasticus. And we're going to read verse 29. I mean, uh, <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 39, excuse me. And we're going to go to verse 20. We we'll just start at 28. We get the point. All right. Ecclesiastes 39 and 28. It says, There be spirits that are created for vengeance. The Most High creates certain spirits just for vengeance, right? Which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of. Of him that made them. Now in that first sentence. First paragraph you can see. When the when people get killed or destroyed. And spirits pour out on them. Or, or death comes to them. Whose wrath is it appeasing? Is it Satan that's angry? No. Who made the spirits? Did Satan make the spirits? No. He's a, he himself is a spirit. And he was created. Let me read that again. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. Which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. And then it goes on to name some of the spirits. Fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword, punishing the wicked to destruction. Listen to this. They shall rejoice in his commandment. Whose commandment? Whose commandment would they rejoice in? They rejoice in the commandment of him that made them. Listen. They shall rejoice in his commandment and shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. Who are they? The spirits that are created for vengeance. They shall not transgress the most high's word. It's in complete order up in the heavens. And no one does their own thing, including Satan. He doesn't go about on the earth doing things on his own power. They shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. And deeper than that, when you look into the scriptures and you um, you go to Ezekiel and it says each one of the angels have four faces. One of their faces, which, which are their attributes, one of the faces of the angels is likened to an ox. Meaning what? That they're stubborn. You can't change the will of an, um, that's been put on an angel because they don't operate under their own will. They do what the Most High tells them. They shall not transgress his word. Okay, so that's that's the first rumor or myth, first myth that's been destroyed. But let's continue on. Now it says here, uh, he used to possess great piety and beauty, but rebelled against God, who nevertheless allows him temporary power over the fallen world and a host of demons. A figure known as the Satan first appears in the in the Tanakh as a as a heavenly prosecutor. A member of the sons of God subordinate to, and they say here, which is most high's name is Yahweh, who prosecutes the nation of Judah in the heavenly court and tests the loyalty of Yahweh's followers 
by forcing them to suffer. Well, you know what? When you read uh, fables like these, you can use that false name because that's a false god and this whole thing is a false idea. During the inter uh, intertestamental period, possibly due to influence from the Zoroastrian figure of Angra Manu, the Satan developed into a malevolent entity with abhorrent qualities and dualistic opposition to God. See, now that's a lie. He's not against the Most High. He does the Most High's will. And we're going to show you that in the scriptures. Let's just read, finish reading this. In the apocryphal book of Jubilees, the Most High grants the Satan, referred to as Mastema, authority over a group of fallen angels to tempt humans to sin and punish them. Now, if that were true, they would be the ones who decide what to do. And you're going to see in the scriptures that kings can't even lie unless it's the most high that tells them, tells the demons to do it, to tempt people, to, uh, to tell people to, to um, have a lying tongue. And we'll prove that. And that's what that's the reason why we tell you also that corrupted books like this book of Jubilees that you people read, uh, um, the book of Enoch and these books, they're corrupted and they don't they're not consistent with the scriptures. But nevertheless, people are going to still read them. Going on in the synoptic gospels, Satan tempts Yahweh Shai in the desert and is identified as the cause of illness and temptation. Satan is described in the New Testament as the ruler of the demons and the God of this age. That's somewhat true. In the book of Revelation, Satan appears as a great red dragon who is defeated by Michael the, Arch the archangel and cast down from heaven. Now, that's a lie. This is the way you people break it down, but it's not true. It's not true at all. So we're going to read a little more, and then we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. He is later bound for 1,000 years, but is briefly set free before being ultimately defeated and cast into the lake of fire. In Christianity, Satan is also known as the devil. <laughs> and although the book of Genesis does not mention him, he is often identified with the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Satan's appearance is never described in the Bible. But since the ninth century, ninth century, he has often been shown in Christian art with horns, cloven hooves, unusually hairy legs, and a tail, often naked and holding a pitchfork. See, now let's let's see what it says after that. These are an amalgam of traits derived from various pagan deities, including Pan, Poseidon, and Bess. Right, this shit is made up, man. And we try to tell you people that your Christianity is made up. Your white Jesus is false. Your fake image of Satan is false. Hell is a false idea. Okay, the real devil is the so-called white man Esau who comes after the working of Satan. Satan is a spirit, okay? And no one knows or hadn't been told us how he looks. Just as we don't know how, you know, the Archangel Michael looks. Now, this the, um, the description of the Savior himself, we know how he looks. Because it's in the scriptures Which you so called white people You Edomites you don't like it Let's just continue on It says in medieval times Satan played a minimal role in Christian theology And was used as a comic relief figure In mystery plays Right During the early modern period Satan's significance greatly increased As beliefs such as demonic possession And witchcraft became more prevalent During the age of enlightenment Belief in the existence of Satan Became harshly criticized Nonetheless, belief in Satan has persisted, particularly in the Americas. You know, people over here are a bunch of idiots. You're running around in the earth talking about somebody's going to go to hell and they're going to burn for all eternity, which is completely stupid. Continuing on, in the Quran, Shaitan, also known as Iblis, is an entity made of fire who was cast out of heaven because he refused to bow before the newly created Adam. And incites humans and jinn to sin by infecting their minds with waswas, -was, which is evil suggestions. And then we told you that that Islam is a bunch of crap too. Although Satan is generally viewed as evil, some groups have very different beliefs. The theistic Satanism, in theistic Satanism, Satan is considered a deity who is either worshipped or revered. In Levian Satanism, Satan is a symbol of virtuous characteristics and liberty. Satan appears frequently in Christian literature, most notably in Dante Allig Alighieri's Inferno. And I just mentioned that. There's a video game called Dante's Inferno, which you fight Satan. And that's enough. You know, he continues to appear in film, television, and music. 
And then, you know, you people are stupid. You know? And this got a little bit of information. If you want to know more, you can look it up. Okay? Let's just get out of this. It's madness. And so is this. This is madness as well. We'll leave we'll leave it up. Now let's go here and read who is in charge of the evil. Because when you start going to the scriptures and you break things down, then Christ Christianity becomes null and void. You know, particularly this myth about hell because when I was in the church growing up as a kid, they would show this movie every year and it was called Burning Hell. You know? It was called Burning Hell. Now, and I may be able to dig it up on YouTube. If I get an opportunity, I may put a clip in. It just depends. So let's read here Amos 3. In verse 6, it says, Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? That mentions Satan there. It mentions the Most High himself, the Supreme Being, the Almighty. is in control always. To say that the Most High uh, created a being who would rebel against him and then take one. Because that, that uh, Wikipedia's breakdown of Satan never said it. Well, it did say that he rebelled. You know, he refused to bow down to Adam, if that's what it said. But Christianity says he rebelled against the Most High, tried to take over heaven, and took a third of the angels with him. And they all got kicked out of heaven, which is stupid. Okay? Completely stupid. And then you think that Satan is against and uh, he's in a uh, direct opposition against the Most High, which is also a lie. Now, again, it says, shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord has not done it? Right. The Most High is the one that's causing these things to happen. Isaiah 45 and verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Satan is a created being. So now let's get into the matter of this whole thing about Satan is going to fight, you know, in heaven and war in heaven. He got kicked out of heaven. It's not even talking about the spiritual demon Satan. We're going to, you know, read a, a few quick scriptures on this and then we're going to move on. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on that. All right. So this is Revelation 12 and 7. And there was war in heaven. First off, you people see that right away. You jump to conclusions. Okay. This is. Um, not talking about up in the heavens The Most High fighting against Satan Satan rebelled And then it's the Most High just stepped back And he let Michael and the angels fight against Satan And the angels that he Got them to, to uh, leave with him in rebellion That's stupid So let's read it And there was war in heaven Michael and his angels fought against the dragon And the dragon fought in his angels And, uh, and prevailed not Neither was their place found anymore in heaven now this is not talking about a, a literal battle up in the heavens. It's talking about on the atmosphere in the earth, this entity known as the dragon with seven heads and ten horns. Because if you go, let's see. Um, stay right here. Uh, let's go to Revelation 18. So, and you know, you see right away, it's not talking about, let's see, let's just go to it. Revelation 17, Salakia. <clears throat> Revelation 17, verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. This great red dragon is talking about an empire it's even mentioned in the book of daniel when you read it in the book of daniel okay it's mentioned in the book of daniel you know this uh great dragon so let's just go back we ain't even gonna bother to stay in stay on that so here let's explain the dragon and i'll put you know something in it here uh and there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels the great red dragon First and foremost, red symbolizing Esau, the so-called white man. And then, you know, in the Roman Empire, right? His, um, the dragon itself with the seven heads and ten horns, these are the different nations, Edomite nations, that's going to try to fight against the Lord at his return. And when they say that their place was found not anymore in heaven, it's the immediate heavens above the earth, in which when the Savior comes back, 
the uh the the uh nations of the world and their armies are going to try to fight the savior it's not talking about the spiritual demon satan and it, when you go to verse 9 and the great red dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels cast out with him now it's not talking about a literal uh, the spiritual demon satan as a matter of fact let's go to second thessalonians and uh two and verse eight and it says and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming this is an entity a uh, group of um the great red dragon not a singular entity but a group of uh, individuals trying to fight the savior when he comes back but a particular group of people in charge and it says here even him whose coming is after the working of satan with all power and signs and lying wonders you see so it's not talking about the spiritual demon Satan. This is someone who comes after the working of Satan. You see, now we can go to Ecclesiastes there. Let's go ahead and take that out. Ecclesiastes 21. And verse 27, it says, With the ungodly curses Satan, he curseth his own soul. So it's a group of individuals who partake in the ways of Satan. What would be some of the ways of Satan? Murder, bloodshed, death, killing, incest, rape, homosexuality, right? These people known as the so-called white people, Edomites, Caucasians, they are the children of Satan. Now, let's prove here that this is not talking about a literal uh, war up in the heavens. It's on the earth. Revelation 19. And I saw the beast. The great red dragon, the beast and the kings of the earth, different nations and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. So this is where, you know, during World War III, when the nations are fighting each other, you're going to have the beast, NATO, America, and the EU, right? All the Edomite nations and their uh, allies fighting against the so-called, uh, the, the Russians, the so-called Russians, which are more Edomites, and their allies. And then they're going to all leave the battle they have one against another to try to fight the Savior. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone which is not talking about hell this is the nuclear destruction now let's go i didn't want to have to go and get this but i guess i will um we're gonna go real briefly and this will break it all down for you real briefly to the um, 1611, right? We'll go to 2nd Esdras. And you know, and I had actually pulled this up, but then I said it's too much to bring out, but I guess the spirit the most high wanted to come out. 2nd Esdras chapter 13, right? And it's going to break down what we just read, Revelation 19. <clears throat> I got to read it. It says, uh, And it came to pass that the seven days I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that had moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. This is the Savior, that man in the thousands of heaven. <clears throat> and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burnt that heard his voice, like as the earth felleth when it filleth the fire. <clears throat> and after this I beheld and lo there was a great that was gathered together a multitude of men men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea and when it says out of the sea it's talking about the waters when you look in um, the count of generation in the Hebrew it says Mayim meaning the heavens or waters right the, the waters above so it's talking about this man that came from the sea is Yahweh Shai, the Savior coming from he from the heavens. But I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. This is a chariot, the Savior is on. But I would not, I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this, I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to, sub to subdue him were so afraid, and yet there's fight. Now it said it was a multitude of men. It didn't say spiritual beings goblins and ghouls from under the earth with pitchforks and lances you know flying in a, in a 
flying in uh, devices made out of flesh and human flesh. No, it didn't say that. It said a multitude of men. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lift up his hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath. And out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. And it's talking about out of the mouth of his great chariot. Because the Savior's not going to be standing on top of a chariot breathing fire like a cartoon. No, it's talking about the, the, the mouth of his ship. He pressed a button and he zapped everybody with, a, with, a, with, with fire. And they were all mixed together. The blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest. And fell with violence upon the multitude. <clears throat> which was prepared to fight and burnt them up every one. So that upon a... A sudden of an innumerable multitude Nothing was to be perceived But only dust and smell of smoke When I saw this I was afraid <clears throat> So And it's going to go and break it down to you now it, it read you What was going on Now it's going to break it down 2nd Edges 13 and 25 This is the meaning of the vision Whereas thou sawest a man coming up From the midst of the sea The same is he whom God the highest Hath kept the great season which by his own self shall deliver his creature. His creature is Israel. The elect of the house of Israel. And shall order them that are left behind. And whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth. There came a blast of wind and fire and storm. And that he held neither sword. Nor any instrument of war. But that the rushing in of him destroyed the whole multitude. That came to subdue him. This is the interpretation. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth, and he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth, meaning his son, okay? Not he, him, him, he himself. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another, meaning the spiritual realm is going to be here fighting against the fleshly realm because what? The spiritual realm of the angels. The Savior and the angels, they're going to come back to deliver his people. And they're going to be fighting against you fleshly beings, as we said. And at that time, when these things shall, become, shall come to pass and the signs shall happen, which I showed thee before. And then shall my son, my son, be, be declared whom thou sawest as a man ascending. Right, in the book of Acts, it said the Savior ascended up to be with his father, right? He went up into a cloud. The cloud received him out of their sight. So it said this same Yahweh Shai that you have seen leave will come in like manner. This is he who is speaking of. And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have won against another. World War Three. And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. But he shall stand upon the top of the Mount Zion and Zion shall come. And shall be showed to all men being prepared and built it like as thou sawest the hill graven with our hands. Right. You're going to see the elect going up into the chariots. That's what that's what it means. Every eye shall see him. You know. Every eye is going to see him when he when he comes back to save the elect. But he's going to at the same time gonna be zapping, zapping all the wicked people. And this my son shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations. Which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest. What did I just say? He's gonna be zapping all the wicked, all the wicked, Israelites included, that are not of the elect, and shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are likened to a flame, and he shall destroy them without labor by the law, which is likened to fire. Wait a minute. These so-called Christians say the laws are done away with, but in that whole thing, did you see anything mentioned in the spiritual demons, Satan being kicked out of heaven, the ain't the demons with him? No, you never see that. It's talking about on the earth, immediately above the atmosphere is what it's talking about. So when you go back here and you read that in the um, Revelation 19 and 19, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gather together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. See, now going back to Revelation 12 and 9 and the, uh, 12 and 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. The dragon is NATO, the EU, the revised Roman Empire. You know, the so-called white man's kingdom. He's the Satan that rules a, a kingdom. Now, I also meant to get this here too. Let's just move on now. We ain't going to stay on that no longer. 
So when you say that evil spirits come from Satan, this will prove that they don't come from Satan. This is 1 Samuel 16 and 14. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Wait a minute. I thought the Lord only, only was good. He only does good. He's just all love. No. You know, the most high is complete balance. He said in Isaiah 45 and 7, I create, uh, uh, what do he say? He said, um, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Here's another one. First Samuel 19 and 9. And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul as he sat in his house and his javelin in his hand and David played with his hand. See, an evil spirit from the Lord. So the most high the one sent forth evil spirits. Now, I want to prove uh, that this kingdom on earth, it is ruled by Satan, but through his people, the Edomites, the so-called white man. You know, we'll get, we'll get into that later. Now, let's go here. Because you people say that Satan is down in hell, you know, torturing souls. Now, that article that we read from Wikipedia, it was partially right. that it Because it said that he went among the sons of God, which Satan is one of the sons of God. He's a holy... Uh, not a holy he's a uh, angelic being which he's an angel but he's the angel that's in charge of evil spirits which the most high put him in charge of evil spirits and we'll show you that also so this is Job 1 and we'll read I think verse 6 yeah Job 1 and verse 6 and it says now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them now I thought Satan got kicked out of heaven I thought he, he's allowed to go back and forth. He got kicked out. He didn't try to take over heaven, him and the angels, him and his evil angels. The one third that he convinced them, right, to rebel against the Most High. But the Most High is allowing them open door. Listen again. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. You see, so the Most High said, Satan, where you been? What you been doing? So he gave a report to the Most High. I've been all over the place, Lord. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. And he said, OK, just like I told you to do. You know, Satan ain't in charge of nothing. I mean, he's in charge of evil spirits, but he's not a he's not a direct opposite, a direct opposition, opposition and rebellion against the Most High. He's in complete order. And according to what the Most High designed him to do. Let's prove it. This is Second Chronicles 18. And verse 18. Again he said. Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne. And all the hosts of heaven. Standing on his right hand and on his left. On the right hand. The righteous spirits. On his left hand. The evil spirits. Complete perfect order. Nobody rebelling. Nobody murmuring. The evil spirits go do evil, right? The righteous spirits do what the Most High tell them to do. And the Lord, which even the righteous spirits have a, a rule over them, Yahweh Shah. He's the, the, the king over all the spirits, and the, he's under the Most High. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spake after this manner, and another sang after that manner. Then there came out a then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? So a, a particular spirit, the Most High asked the question. He said, look, I need this king to go and fight in this battle and die. Who can I, which one of y'all can I get to do this? So a particular spirit came. All the spirits was gathered up in the heavens. If you want to say they was having a meeting, the Most High came in. He said, order, order in the meeting. Y'all evil spirits, calm down over there, you know. Righteous spirits on one side, on the right hand side, on the left hand side, the evil spirits. Now, when you look in the um, 1611 King James Bible in the column, when, it, when you said when it says there came a, out a spirit in the column, it says Satan. You see, then came then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said, wherewith? How you going to do it? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of of all his prophets so obviously this spirit is, is a, a spirit of lying which is wicked so how is it that wicked spirits can be up in the heavens i thought they was down on the earth in hell proving perfectly what the scripture said that an evil spirit from the lord was on saul right 
because the Most High has complete order there and they don't transgress his word. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, <clears throat> and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. So the Most High was pleased with it. He said, All right, cool. Go ahead and do it. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. You see? So there it is. There it is. So you people in the Christian church, you're a bunch of idiots. The scriptures don't say anything about it. You people of the world are a bunch of bunch of dummies. But you've been, you know, it's the time that the Most High was sent for these men to break down these strongholds. Now, any Christian, so-called Christian, stumble across this video, you have to ask yourself a serious question. Why do you go to church anymore? What's the point? They don't teach you anything. All they do is just repeat the same lies, which we read in that article on Wikipedia. It said all these ideas that you have of Satan is an amalgamation of pagan deities that they put together, you know, just like Christmas. <laughs> And Santa Claus. Now this is Matthew 12. And this this just proving that Satan got a kingdom. Which is on the earth. And the, and the children of Satan rule his kingdom. Uh, Matthew 12. And we'll start at verse 23. And, and all the people were amazed and said. Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it. They said this fellow does not cast out devils. But by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. And Yahweh knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself should not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I, cast, and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of the most high, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. So proving that, you know, like it says, Satan fight against Satan. Uh, Satan cast out Satan. Then how can his kingdom stand? You see, pretty much telling you that this, this kingdom on the earth, this rulership, it is Satan's. And we're going to prove that to you in the next scripture. This is Luke 4 verse 1. And this is in the New Testament. So going back in Job, when you ask a so-called Christian, how did Satan... How was he among the sons of the Most High? Y'all said this before he got kicked out of, out of heaven. You know? But Satan is also in the New Testament. The spirit of, of, of Satan is in the New Testament. You people got a lot of explaining to do. This is Luke 4 and 1. And Yahweh being full of the Holy Spirit returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. He was fasting. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. This is a Satan here. He's not under the earth. He's probably walking along beside him, asking him questions, talking to him. You know, he was there going to and fro, to and fro in the earth, up and down in the heavens, at his own will that was given unto him of the Most High. And Yahweh shall answer them, saying, It is written <clears throat> that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of the Most High. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that it is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Wait a minute. I thought Satan was under the earth. I thought his kingdom was, he was ruling over the, 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 uh, the kingdom of hell. No, he's ruling on the earth. Given unto him by the most high. That's why you so-called white people, you Edomites, you're his children. And he gave that power unto you because it was given unto him. And all the kingdoms of the earth ruled through Satan. But when the kingdom of heaven comes on the earth, that's going to be the savior and the 12 tribes of Israel ruling over you devils. You see? So... I'm going to read that again and the devil said unto him all this power will I give thee and the glory of them the kingdoms of the earth for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will I give it so Satan is not under the earth he's not in he's not in hell you know now here we see when Satan possesses people so that that's kind of keep in keeping with what that um article was saying he he's given the power to possess people to do wickedness 
using his utilizing his evil spirit you know that the most high told him you know told him what to do he's giving satan orders on what to do and this just proves that satan is not under the earth you know that's the main point we want to bring out satan is not under the earth okay he's doing the will of the most high in the heavens in the earth whatever you know wherever the most high would send him this is luke 22 and 1 now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh which is called the passover and the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. You see? So Satan in, entered into an individual because he's a spirit, you know? He's not a physical being. He's a spirit. And he utilizes flesh, like we said, you know? Now, when people act up and they do things, wickedness, then they're being used by Satan which really the most high just allows or or put Satan on you. You know? Just like he did with um being the lion spirit in the mouth of um King Ahab's prophets. The most high told him, I want you to get the evil spirits together and I want y'all to go and entice Ahab that he go to Ramoth Gilead and, and he get killed. You know? Just like the most high tell um tell Satan, I want you to um kill that guy Ray Ray. I want you to kill Pookie too. I want you to get your spirits together. Find out, get a, a good evil spirit, and you go over there and put one on his wife, make her cheat with Ray Ray, put an evil spirit on Ray Ray, make him sleep with Pookie wife, right? And then I want you to put a, another evil spirit on, on uh, Pookie while he's selling dope, you know? And then I want you to make uh, Pookie get a gun and then go shoot Ray Ray. And Ray Ray pull out his gun and shoot Pookie, you see? It's the same same thing all over, man. The most high just, he's navigating and allowing these things to go on in the earth but what did it say should it be evil in the city and the lord have not done it and when the most high give these evil spirits his word tell them what to do they don't say no nah, lord i don't want to do that that's a little baby in that crib i don't want to kill the baby the most high be like you know they wouldn't say that first of all because it said the, the spirits of vengeance will not transgress his word now here in john 8 44 8 the savior asked 42 Yahweh shall said unto them if God were your father ye would love me for I proceeded forth and came from the most high neither came I of myself but he sent me why do ye not understand my speech even because ye cannot hear my word ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do so wait a minute the savior is telling a group of Israelites that they they acting like devils now let's look and see on the earth who did these ways after the devil he was a murderer he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it you see so the so-called white man has those traits he's a liar he murders he kills that's why when you read in revelation chapter 6 it says death and hell follow with him right so basically, you have a was telling these these Israelites that y'all acting like the damn Romans, man. You know, you're doing just like they do. You shall know them by their fruits. So finally here. Uh, Luke 16. Just bear with me here. I remember what I wanted to bring out on this. Luke 16. Okay, this is what I want. I want to bring out this parable. Because when you read in the parable of Lazarus, right? Supposedly being in hell. Never at any time is Satan even mentioned. You're proving number one that it's a, it's a parable. Also number two. That if there was, you know, that uh, Satan is not mentioned in hell. Because that's not where he, he would be. Hell doesn't exist. It was only a parable. So this is uh, Luke 16 and 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And again it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. It didn't say the rich man died and oh well let's read more. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. So it does say he's in hell, right? But Abraham is also there. Abraham is in hell, or he can see hell. 
And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So, for, so wait a minute. The rich man died. He was in hell, right? But also Lazarus and Abraham, they was over there on the other side. So hell is next to paradise? I thought hell was under the earth. You see? And then Satan is not mentioned anywhere. Why didn't Abraham communicate with Satan and tell Satan what to do? Because it's a parable. It's not talking about a literal hell. It's, it really is on a deeper level. It's talking about Abra um, the rich man represents these Edomites. These people on the earth. The so-called white people. The children of Esau. And Lazarus represents the, the, uh, the children of Israel. That's really what it's really going into. But you got a lot of scoffers that don't even believe that. Which is fine. You cannot believe if you want. But Abraham says, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And beside all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that will come from thence. You see, so the way that this looks is like if this was talking about a literal hell, there's a gap between hell and paradise. And the people over in paradise is celebrating and seeing their loved ones. They're enjoying life. And they can look over in hell a great way off and see people suffering and burning in the fire. What kind of weird ass heaven is that? That you get to see people suffering and burning for all eternity while you lay back on a cloud eating grapes. And being fanned by uh, 12 handsome youths or whatever the, whatever the fuck. 72 handsome youths or virgins that these Islams also believe in. Which is stupid, you know. So this is just, just more proof. And let's also get a quick scripture here. Um, <clears throat> Listen to this. Psalms 9 and 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And all nations that forget God. So you mean to tell me that all the nations are going to be turned into a subterranean place filled with lava, smoke, demons. You know, and all this madness. No, man, it's not true. That's a myth. And Satan is a spirit, okay? And he works for the Heavenly Father. He does it the same as all the rest of the spirits. They're in complete order. You know, that's going to do it for the lesson. You know, this right here is just some made up stuff. So we're going to end the lesson right there. I, mean, I went on long enough. Probably should have ended it a while ago. But this right here is falsehood. This is not real. This has been analyzing Satan. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Enough respect to the brothers teaching the truth all over the earth. See you soon with another lesson, Lord willing. Shalom.